Hey everybody, before we start today's show, I want to tell you about a live taping coming up on October 3rd at 7 o'clock. We're going to be doing the Chicago Podcast Festival in front of a live audience over at the Beat Kitchen, which is 2100 West Belmont in Chicago. Uh, we're going to have three special guests and snacks. More information, chicagopodcastfestival.org. Come see us. This episode of the Feed Podcast is brought to you by the Chicago French Market. The market offers fresh ingredients for cooking at home, delicious grab-and-go options for any meal of the day, or even a simple picnic or office party. The Chicago French Market, a taste of Europe in the heart of the Midwest. This episode of the Feed Podcast is brought to you by Oscars Mexican Seafood. With five locations throughout the San Diego area, Oscars focuses on Baja-style fish tacos, fresh ceviches, and hearty seafood burritos. And all their salsas and agua frescas made on site every day. They'll even cater. For more information, OscarsMexicanSeafood.com. The Feed Podcast is brought to you in part by United Healthcare. A lot of people think insurance companies are all the same if they think of them at all. Oh, I think of them all the time <laughs> when I'm paying my that? bills. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, of course. When you pay that check every the month. The copay also, that's kind of annoying. It is. It but is. United Healthcare is different. They offer a range of unique programs, things like Real Appeal, a weight loss program for a full year at no additional cost to your employees. And how does a $0 copay sound? Fabulous. That sounds really good. Amazing. I'm paying like 25 bucks right now. <laughs> if you see your primary care physician, that could be an option too. More information. Go to uhc.com slash benefits. You're listening to The Feed Podcast. Get the inside scoop by following us on Twitter at The Feed Podcast. So, Rick, as I've been doing this show with you the last couple of years, I've noticed, you know, you have been everywhere. You've traveled all over the world. You've tasted all these different foods from different places. And it's been really difficult to stump you. And I have a feeling. I have a feeling you're today, going to stump me today. Today I could stump you. <laughs> you could. Awesome. Okay. That's what I wanted to just I wanted to check before I started reading this intro. So most American Jews are Ashkenazi. That is Eastern European in origin. The Sephardics come from the Mediterranean, mainly Spain, Portugal, and Tunisia. That's why in America, if you've ever been to a Seder or a Rosh Hashanah dinner, or maybe seen a Jewish food depicted on TV or film. You've seen the mockery, the monochromatic food, the starchy, carb-laden dishes of noodles, kishki, knishes, and matzo balls. And I was guessing, I mean, I sort of, we haven't talked about this before. I've just read this now, but you probably have not had a lot of this kind of food, right? I have not. No, even yeah. in spite of the fact that one of my best friends growing up was Jewish, I never remember ever being invited to her house for a meal. That's and really. every, In Oklahoma. In Oklahoma. Oh, and every, every summer, we would go to a temple and visit a temple and learn what it was all about. But we never ate anything. It wasn't until I went to University of Michigan again for graduate school that I was introduced to any kind of Jewish food. Which was Zingerman's probably, right? No, I was there before oh, Zingerman's oh, wow. opened. <laughs> That's how old okay, I am, okay? Right. <laughs> but that would have been it, the deli there. Yeah, yeah, the the deli, were, yeah, but yeah. I mean just people that were my classmates making food and bringing it in. So when I say Kugel, that means nothing to you? Well, it does now, but it meant nothing okay. to me back then. Right, well, so I really had no idea. Okay, so technically it is a yeah. baked pudding or casserole, yeah. typically made made from egg noodles, lakshankugel. Um, it's funny, um, the guy in uh, Sang Yoon in California has got a restaurant called Lakshan uh -huh. because he grew up next to a Jewish woman, and so he loves those noodles, so his uh -huh. restaurant's called Lakshan. So lakshankugel or potatoes, that was in the old days. The name of the dish comes from the Middle High German kugel, meaning sphere, globe, or ball. Thus the Yiddish name likely originated as a reference to the round puffed up shape of the original dishes so it's Wait, an interesting how does that relate to what i know now as a kugel so it used to be a ball like uh -huh. a steamed pudding and oh. and now it has evolved over the last several hundred okay. years okay. into kind of a, a dish you do in a pyrex uh -huh. uh, that you bake <laughs> in a pyrex uh, that, that sounds is, right sounds so american yeah, yes okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what i'm talking about right yeah. okay so coming up like, on it's related to casserole right it's definitely casserole yeah okay. okay so coming up on today's show a pair of kugels worth trying at home even if you're not celebrating Reading Rosh Hashanah this week, a delicious taste of tradition that happens to be completely meatless. Stay with us and pour some coffee because after you eat two kugels, you'll need a nap. This is the Feed Podcast. I'm Steve Dolinsky, a food and travel reporter at ABC 7 News, the Chicago Tribune, and Canada's Globe and Mail. And I'm Rick Bayless, the chef and owner of Chicago's Frontera Grill, Topolo Bampo, Shoko, Lenya Brava, and host of public television's Mexico, one plate at a time. And every week, the Feed takes a deep dive into the world of professional chefs, restaurateurs, food artisans, and drink experts 
sharing their stories, and uncovering their passion for food and drink. But that's not all. Rick and I are always traveling the globe for our jobs, eating, drinking, and immersing ourselves in the local culture. And if we find something along the way that we think is exciting, well, there's a pretty good chance it's going to find its way here to our James Beard Award-winning podcast. A kugel comes from the German Gugelhof, a type of ring-shaped cake. Nowadays, kugels are baked in square or rectangular pans, but the first ones were made from bread and flour and were savory rather than sweet. About 800 years ago, cooks in Germany replaced the bread mixtures with noodles. Eventually, eggs were incorporated. The addition of cottage cheese and milk created a custard-like consistency. In Poland, where many of the Ashkenazi Jews in the U.S. are from, cooks added raisins, cinnamon, and sweet curd cheese. In Lithuania, the dish is called kugelis. It's a baked potato pudding with bacon, milk, onions, and eggs. And I remember actually having that dish at that Lithuanian restaurant here in Chicago over in Bridgeport or you know, on the yes. near south side years ago. The I, Lithuanian, healthy, it was called healthy he- food. Healthy food, and it w- that was the least healthy dish you it could was, possibly ever have, and it was so utterly delicious. Right, it was, because, of course, the bacon and the onions yeah. and the yeah, yeah. But now this dish, traditionally, you'd, be ma- you'd make, it's a dairy dish, so if you're keeping mm. kosher, you would not have meat in that meal because it's right. an all-dairy thing. Right. Um, and I grew up eating this as part of a dairy meal because uh-huh. we kept kosher as a kid. Um, everybody, here's the thing about kugel, and I know there are a lot of dishes, maybe it's moles like this. You, you talk to 100 ladies, you've got 100 kugels. I mean, it, every, it's exactly, and, and, I think it's the, the case all over the world. When you get a really traditional dish, everyone's going to tell you their take on it. So every recipe is going to be slightly uh, slightly different. But it's interesting that that word, it started off as off because there is still that same ring-baked cake that is made in Alsace called Kugelhof. Really? And it, yes, ah. and there's a really famous bakery in Paris where the the chef uh, baker is, uh, he's from that area, and he makes it, and it's a specialty of his bakery. Because so much of Yiddish stems from German. Right. And you hear a lot of the same sort of exactly. tones, right? Uh, well, anyway, since Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, begins today, I spent the afternoon in my mother-in-law Nina's kitchen recently, to see how she goes about making one of her family favorites. She started by showing me several old cookbooks, all of which seem to offer a variation of kugel. These are old books. Upside yeah. down well, kugel. Is, yeah. Oh, There's a creamy noodle has, kugel. Yeah. Cheddar noodle kugel. Wow. Yeah. And and I think upside no- down noodle kugel is in both of these. Um, these are Ort cookbooks. I have three of them. Ort? What is that? Um... ORT is the Organization for Rehabilitation Through Training, and I think they work a lot in in Israel. This is what you consult when you put together your kugel? I used to consult these, yes. So I see a lot of the same things. Eight-ounce package of wide noodles, sour cream, butter, cream cheese. So there's a lot of dairy. So if you were keeping kosher, you wouldn't have any meat at your table because this is a dairy item. Right. Correct. Some people add raisins to their kugel. I don't because I don't think our family likes raisins in things, so um, I don't. Butter. Do you you find that as a dividing line for people? It's either with or without raisins. I don't know. (laughs) I I don't know. (laughs) Where did you get your recipe that you make every year from? Is it from a book or from a family? My friend, you know, my mother passed away when I was very young. So I don't really remember her. I'm sure she made noodle kugels, but I don't remember. So when I got married, I started to ask people and get cookbooks. And one of my friends, I would try. I tried a lot of different recipes. One of my friends had this recipe from her husband's aunt. And so we tasted it and we loved it. And it's our favorite, so I make it every year. And you know, the noodle kugel years ago was called noodle pudding. And maybe some people of that era still call it noodle pudding. Okay, so how do we start, Nina? So the first thing you're going to do is you're boiling water. I am boiling water, and I'm going to throw in a pound of noodles. And usually they're wide noodles. They're not, they're not um, you know, the skinny ones. You like the wide ones, okay. Yeah, I do. I've been melting butter. You, t- you, you really have to get butter um, if you want to mix it with sugar. So you have to really make sure it's very soft. Yeah. Stirring with a wooden spoon and, and you're going to add sugar. And now I'm going to add a cup of sugar. I like how she's consulting with this recipe card. I do. It says Nina's Noodle Kugel. Yeah. 
<laughs> I do. <laughs> but good I, handwriting. I, I don't think I'm a really good cook because I always use recipes. Yeah, but that's okay. If it's a good recipe and you follow it, well, you know. That's it. I think I'm good at figuring out what a good recipe might be. But a lot of people, you know, they add or they take away. I don't. I stick to the recipe. A fair amount of sugar in there. Yes, you're right. <laughs> this you recipe correct. calls for, if it was a One pound. cup of sugar. It was a cup of sugar with like a pound of noodles. 16 ounces of noodles. 16 ounces, okay. Right. I'm just going to mix this up now. Yep. Until the, all the sugar is incorporated. I do. I don't like low fat or 2% cottage cheese or sour cream. What's the point? It's just, I just think it tastes better. Of course it tastes better. It's more fat in it. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. But also, this cottage cheese is not as creamy. There's more substance to it. I think it's more solid. Okay. Okay, and a lot of them seem to be more um, mushy and creamy. Okay, so this is going to get added to this butter and sugar? Yeah, first I put the eggs in. Eggs, okay. Okay, four eggs, room temperature. And sometimes I do this. So you use free-range eggs, okay. I do. Okay, so now you're going to mix up the four eggs with the butter and sugar. Right. But you serve it with the main meal. It's not a dessert, even though it's sweet. Oh, no. no, no, never. Right, with the main meal, always. Sure is nice to have when you're eating all that sort of nice starchy carb <laughs> right. Jewish food. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a little sweet, a little sugar, yeah, okay. <laughs> Some casserole eggs, bro. yeah, right, sure. Right, right, right. Okay, so this is a pretty soupy mixture, it looks like now, with the, right. sort of the egg, a lot of egg in there, and the butter. Yep. And the sugar. Yep, I really would like the butter to be more melted, but it'll melt. That's okay. So, all right. So now I add orange juice, a cup of orange juice. Cup of orange juice, okay. No, no, I'm sorry, it's a half a cup. Half a cup of orange juice, okay. Half a cup. By the way, we're going to have this recipe on our website, uh, thefeedpodcast.com, so don't worry about the amount at this point. But uh, that was orange juice. I'm, I'm yeah, guessing, yeah. Um, Al, your husband did the freshly squeezed this morning for you, got up at like 5 in the morning and, and squeezed. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that came out of a, a canister from the fridge, yeah. No, actually, we buy, uh, I never get the frozen orange oh. juice. But you just it's buy the like the fresh bottle fresh. of, yeah. Sure. A lot of times he likes Mariano's orange juice, freshly squeezed Mariano. Yeah. What, what? I just give him a hard time. It's yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, so orange juice in there. All That's right. interesting. And now I always have worried that I'm not doing it right. Okay? okay. So that's why I do. And I always do look at my recipes. That's okay. Nothing wrong okay. with that. Now I'm going to put in the cottage cheese. Cottage cheese. Okay. And I only buy Breakstone because I like the consistency of it. Okay, so I find this, unless they've changed, <clears throat> a little thicker than a lot of other cottage cheeses. A lot of dairy. Wow, there's a lot of... Because you're going to add sour cream too, aren't you? Is there sour cream? Yeah, there yes. is sour cream. Yes. That's why this dish is so good. Wow, I just... After 49 years of living on this earth, I just realized it's so good because there's not only cottage cheese, but sour cream and sugar and butter. It's like... Why are noodles so delicious? And two, it was two sticks of butter, you know. Oh, two sticks. Half a, half a pound, yeah. Uh, those, those Ashkenazi, Eastern European Jews really knew how to load it up in the wintertime. Right. Yeah. And this is not necessarily a seasonal thing, though. You would have this oh, year-round, no. yeah. Yeah, we could do this anytime. A lot of them, if you open up the cottage cheese, they're real creamy and much more um, liquidy. Don't you like your milkshakes thick too? I do. <laughs> and there's only one place that does that for me. That's right. Homer's. Homer's, yeah. yeah. The best. And then I fold in sour cream. Okay. Half a pint of sour cream is one cup. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna put this in, but then I fold this. You've always fold in your sour cream, don't you? I guess. I, I've never made kugel. You didn't? I've never made kugel. Really? I rely on, you know, previous generations of mothers and sisters and aunts to do this, I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, here comes the sour cream now. Comes the sour cream. I should point out, Nina's very good with the spatula. She gets every last ounce of liquid, egg, whatever, into the bowl. I hate to leave anything out. No, that's good. You're you're very efficient in the kitchen. Well, when I watch cooking people cooking on cooking shows, they seem to leave a lot of stuff in the bowl. It's because they're hurrying. They want to just get through the segment. I understand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you're good though. So here comes all the sour cream. Well, okay. I'm gonna fold in the sour cream now. It sort of looks like a, um, a loose polenta at this point. It does. Yeah, a little yellowish, yeah. but creamy and, and soft and right. liquidy and but some, semi-firm. And that's because I think part of it is, you know, the cottage cheese, too. Sure. And I like, I like Breakstone. I like their products. By the way, Breakstone, not a sponsor of this podcast, just in case you were wondering. Uh, there's no product placement whatsoever, but uh, that is Nina's preferred brand. The 4%. And the break zone has been hard to find. Usually it's 2%, isn't it? Or People, you know, there's a lot of 2% or low fat or no fat. Low fat, low fat or no fat, come on. Yeah. I mean, no. you're making Kugel, folks. Right, right. It's not good. All right, so oh, you're adding a little bit more cottage cheese to the bowl. Okay. Right. <laughs> didn't have the right look to you. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> I didn't look at my recipe there. Yeah, there you go. That's why eyeballing it. That's all the years of experience right there in action. Looking at the consistency, she right. knew that she needed to add a little more cottage cheese. Okay. Well, and I'm looking at this as at half. I think it's half. It's half. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I'm going to put the noodles right in with the mixture here first. Okay. And then I'll pour it into the pan. Okay. And you're doing this because you want to get all those noodles incorporated with all that good flavor. Exactly. Yeah. Now, in the old days, I think this used to be, before there were noodles, and we're talking, you know, 800 years ago. They would do uh, bread um, or potato. There's a potato kugel also oh, you could right. do, but noodle kugel has kind of become the standard, right, in the Eastern European tradition. Yeah. Kugel referred to like a sphere or globe, or there was a kugelhof, which was like a circular ring cake, right. or yeah. Right, that's right. So now you're folding in the noodles into this mixture. Right. It's this hard work on your arms, it looks like. You really got to crank it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to get a couple of forks, I think, will, which will work better. Okay, and then you were saying you do not need to oil or, or pre, pre-grease your pan grease because you've got so much pan. butter in here. That's right. So you're going to transfer this to this 9 by 12 uh, glass baking dish. Right. And then you're going to put it into an oven at 350. 350. For how long? Um, at least an hour. Sometimes it depends on your oven. Sometimes it takes longer than that. You want it nice and brown on top, not burnt but brown. All right, so we're gonna put it into the dish. We're gonna put it into the oven. I'm gonna spend an hour getting to know my in-laws a little bit more, because I don't know them enough already. And then we'll come back after it's baked and we'll continue our Kugel show here on the Feed Podcast. Stay with us. Arrive at the meal late? Check out previous episodes, get recipes from ingredient challenges, and see behind-the-scenes pictures at thefeedpodcast.com. Commuters have known this for some time, but over in the West Loop at the Ogilvy Transportation Center, there are more than 30 specialty vendors just waiting to feed you inside the Chicago French Market. The market offers fresh ingredients for cooking at home, delicious grab-and-go options for any meal of the day, or even a simple picnic or office party. Uh, My name is Josh Weisel. I'm the general manager here at BB's Kosher Deli. We're the only certified kosher deli in downtown Chicago. I'm I'm the mashkiach here, a certified Jew on premises at all times when we're cooking. Uh, We have uh, a pretty big following of of non-kosher clients as well who come down here just because they like the pastrami and uh, they know our sandwiches are the best around. Have you seen the lines, by the way, over at the Aloha Poke over there? And there's like the Aloha Poke, there's a line, and then there's Fumare Meats, and then there's, well, as, as you just heard, the vendor. I mean, there's so much going on right now in that market. There's, there's quite a lot to eat. That's very exciting. i got to go <laughs> over there and have some poke. Uh, they've got two entrances, 131 North Clinton and 118 North Canal. And how about this? Covered parking is free for an hour with a $20 purchase. Wow, that's great. They're open Monday to Saturday. You can also grab a bite and surf the Internet since Wi-Fi is free. The Chicago French Market, a taste of Europe in the heart of the Midwest. Hey, Rick, I got a question. Like, how would you describe a fish taco? 
My favorite fish tacos are inspired by the fish tacos in Baja. Um, usually there, the fish is dipped in a like tempura-like batter and fried, and then they got all these delicious toppings that go on on them. It's crema. Right? There's cabbage. Crema, cabbage, hot sauce, avocado. Um, they can so. be avocado. Some people put them, some people don't. But I have to say, it's this stuff that dreams are made out. They of. They are. I've done that trip. Yes. And I, you know, the the next best thing in the U.S. is in San um. Diego. It's called Oscar's Mexican Seafood. They started out as a food truck in Tijuana, became a tiny shack in Pacific Beach just north of San Diego. Now they've got five locations in and around the city, including the latest in Encinitas. Everything's fresh, never frozen, and they make their salsas and agua frescas fresh on site each day. More information, visit oscarsmexicanseafood.com. How crazy is it to think you can actually have your insurance company pay you to walk? What? Yes, they're going to pay you to walk. United Healthcare isn't crazy. They just want you to be healthy. Oh, one of their new programs is called United Healthcare Motion, where members can earn more than $1,000 a year toward their health reimbursement account or health savings account just for walking. I didn't even know I had a health savings account or a reimbursement account, but I that would be a good thing. Um, how do $0 copays sound? Uh, absolutely fabulous. That would be nice. That's yeah. a nice uh, uh, advancement in society. Or pharmacy experience that offers more flexibility and less disruption. Well, if your company works with United Healthcare, ask your friendly HR person about their programs. And if not, go tell them to switch today. I'm going to tell mine. Call 877-233-2059 or go to uhc.com slash benefits to get more information. United Healthcare, a proud supporter of the Illinois Restaurant Association and committed to your good health. Get the inside scoop by following us on Twitter at The Feed Podcast. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We are up in Met today at my in-laws, Nina Dordek. Uh, she's just made some kugel, which has been in the oven for the last hour and 20 minutes or so, Nina, right? A good hour and 20 minutes, yeah. Okay. Sometimes it takes even a little longer. Uh, you got to look so, at it. Okay, yeah. so let's look at it. All right. I think it's okay. It's bubbling, and it's a little browned on top. Right. I think it's pretty good. It's got to be pretty heavy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely bubbling around the sides, and that's obviously there's the butter. Right. You can see that. And then the, just the very top layer of the noodles has browned. Right. And you want that. That's just enough. Light browning. Okay. Knife time. Okay. All right. You're going to cut into this? Yes. Usually I cut it into full 24 pieces. That's a lot of pieces. It's a lot, a lot of family. Of pieces, yeah. a lot of family. Okay. I'll just take one. Right. Right. <laughs> it that really doesn't really matter. It's not like, you know, with like lasagna, if there's a corner piece or a middle piece. or you, you, An edge piece isn't probably a bad idea. But okay. I'll take whatever you'll whatever you're doing there. Okay. It cuts pretty easily, and we did wait for about uh, 15 minutes or so. Yeah, if we would have waited a little longer, it would have been um, more solid. Yeah, and that's kind of what I'm used to seeing on the the holiday table at Rosh Hashanah right. or Passover or any special occasion. Right. All right. So now she's going in with two spoons here. We had a spatula, now it's become two spoons, but that's okay. And it doesn't have to be pretty. It's uh. We're just getting it on the plate. It hasn't set enough, but okay. you know, it's all right. fine, right? All right, we should t- we should taste it. Here's a fork. I really, because I want to hear what your reaction is first. Okay. Not that you've, you know, I mean, you know what this is going to taste like. You've tasted this a million times. Well, I hope so. But sometimes you can't tell until it cools off. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's hot. It's hot. <laughs> mm. But you know what? What? Mm. I just love the creaminess and the richness, and there's a little bit of sweetness. Oh, Not good. too much. Good. I mean, I wouldn't consider it a dessert, but there's a little bit of sweetness, which is that sugar. Right. right. Um, the cottage cheese you can see throughout. Mm-hmm. There's also richness from the sour cream. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out where that orange juice plays a role. It's only about a half a cup in here. It kind of is a background, but that gives you a little bit of the acidity and a little bit of citrus to kind of brighten this a bit, I think. I think so too. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. I think the orange juice really helps flavor it. Yeah, because it's a rich dish. Mm-hmm. You need something to cut through that, and the acid does that. Right. Um, I could honestly eat like three pieces of this. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Good. Um, okay. And I'm curious to see how my other friend, who's going to come up later in the show, does her kugel. It'll be very interesting oh, to see two different kinds yeah. of kugels. Yeah, I'm sure hers will be good too. But thank you so much, Nina, for taking some time on a weekday here and just making your kugel for me and showing me how you do it. Thank you, my son-in-law. Okay, thank love you. you. Love you. Love you. 
So I didn't want you to feel left out. So I did bring you a little bit of Nina's Kugel that I made last night. You made this. This I is not this, the one that she made for you. But it's you. her recipe. Okay. And so we're going to have this recipe on our website, of course, thefeedpodcast.com. Uh-huh. And there's there's no trick to it. I mean, I made it last mm. night. It's, it came out. I gave it to my son. He said it's exactly the same as Grammy's. Oh, that's good. So I'll, it's, it's, it's delicious. Kind of simple, but really delicious. Um, tell me, are there any other flavorings in here? No, there's sour cream, cottage cheese, cottage cheese. I got orange that. juice, uh-huh. sugar, orange juice, a little bit of orange okay, juice okay. for a little acidity, um, and and, that, and a lot of butter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, we boiled the noodles first, and then we just baked them until the top got crispy. Uh, super simple, a lot of dairy, but um, and again, you when you take it out of the oven, you want to let it set up for at least twenty minutes or so to kind of mm-hmm. come together. But it's um, it's to a absorb r- that butter back into yes. it because this is a very buttery, it's very Google. buttery, very rich, but. I, I will say I'm a, a carb lover, mm-hmm. and I'm a dairy lover, so this is pretty good pretty stuff, good, man. Yeah. <laughs> and the top is crispy, yeah. and the middle is you know soft and well, that's beautiful. Like custardy, and yeah, I'm glad you like it. I, I really do. I this really has been do. a Nina's table for you know 30 years, mm-hmm. so it's great. All right, so um, as I mentioned, for every person who makes a kugel, there is a different recipe, so I paid a visit to my friend Mimi Hotmeyer recently as well. Do you know Mimi? Of course I do. Yeah, of course. She and her husband, Gary, started the Corner Bakery, which yep. is obviously well-known in these parts. Um, well, I've known Mimi, Mimi for 20 years, and I've always thought of her as my fantasy mom because she shares my passion for food and puts out one hell of a spread when she entertains, even if it's just for breakfast. I knew she must have a great Kugel recipe, so she let me stop by and watch her process. First of all, Mimi, thank you so much for doing this today and letting me into your kitchen. Pleasure to have you here. <laughs> so, Kugel, um, we're going to talk about this in a second, but I know it's important to get the noodles going first. So let's get the noodles into the water, and then you can tell me your, your story. What are the noodles you, you're using here? I am using, actually, I had a hard time finding the noodles I wanted, egg noodles. Everything's pasta these days, and egg noodles are rather hard to find. So these are Bechtel they're germ, traditional German egg noodles. Good pronunciation there, Bachtel. They're kind of curly. They are curly, and I was looking for straight. No such thing available today in the store. So they have little, little skinny ones, the little, like, thread-like ones, but nothing like this. Okay, so these are going to go into, you've got some boiling water here on the stove. Right, and we're going to put this in. And that is salted boiling water. And they're going to boil for about seven minutes. Okay, so while they're boiling, tell me about how, where does Kugel fit into your family history? So our family always had noodle Kugel. We didn't have potato Kugel. We didn't have savory Kugel. We always had a sweet noodle Kugel for the holidays. Supposedly, the first one was served in 1660, I read. So and Sugar referred to your wealth? Yes, if you had sugar to put in your Kugel, you were wealthier. Sugar was a commodity at that time. So was this recipe that you're using here for the Hopmeyer clan passed down to you by another matriarch? It actually was not. It was actually a recipe I picked up in the 70s when I was working on community cookbooks and editing them. And a friend of mine had submitted this kugel for entry and everyone loved it. They just loved it. So this is the kugel our family's been making since the early 70s. First we beat up four eggs. So you've got a stand mixer here. You're not going to do this by hand. Don't do this by hand. There is no reason you couldn't do this by hand. It just emulsifies a little more in the stand mixer. Okay. Just basically binds it together. So we're going to beat the eggs. On goes the stand mixer now onto a a fairly high speed. So we're going to beat that up. Let me check on the noodles. All right, we're going back to check on the noodles. Pretty vigorous boil here going on. If you're not hosting it, do you bring it somewhere? I always bring Kugel. That's your deal. That's your job. That's my deal. It's my job. That's what I bring. Mimi's bringing the Kugel. Great. And one year it wasn't there. Oh, my God. Someone made a different Kugel. It was a catastrophe. The Kugel was fine, but the kids were so disappointed. Because that's like the memory that they're expecting when they see you at the holiday table. You know how kids don't like to change anything. You just added about a half cup of sugar? About a half a cup of sugar. And now I'm going to add the cottage cheese. That's a pretty pretty healthy spoonful, Mimi. 
two cups of cottage cheese. Two cups of cottage cheese going into the stand mixer that just continues to operate here. There's, there's eggs and there's sugar and now here comes the, the cottage cheese. And then we're going to put one cup of sour cream in. Okay, now do you care about brands? I mean, this is as daisy, but does it make a difference? I just care if it's full fat. Full fat sour cream. Breakstone. I do like Breakstone's cottage cheese. Now we're going to put in one large can of pineapple. Now this is crushed pineapple? It's crushed pineapple, and this is, nowadays, it's organic crushed pineapple. I never used that before, but this time when I went to the store, it was organic. Okay, so this is really the big departure right now from what my mother-in-law was doing. Pineapple was nowhere to be seen in that recipe, but you're saying this has been a part of the Hopmeyer? A little sweetener. A little sweetener. Okay, you're right. Because you only added a half a cup or a little bit of sugar. Right, quarter cup. Okay, now? We're putting in a little bit of butter, just maybe two tablespoons. This looks like melted butter you've already melted ahead of time, so two tablespoons of butter. And a cup of raisins. A cup of raisins, okay, another I different. I like to use golden raisins. Now my mother-in-law and I had a conversation about this. She does not use raisins. She just feels that her family doesn't like them. Did you take a poll to find out if your family likes raisins or not? There's one person in the family who does not like raisins. So, so do they don't get any cool? He doesn't. He just has to go eat around the raisins. Seriously, he'll take a slice but then eat around the raisins. Exactly. You gotta check the noodles so they're not sticking. Is that why you would check them? She's gonna test one with her fingers. It's good. Okay, she's gonna remove it. You're gonna strain. And remember these were cooked with a little salt. You have to be young to handle these big pots. Those big pots are heavy. Yeah, there you go. Okay, that looks good. You're gonna let those drain a bit. Taking some spoonfuls of the melted butter and you're putting it into the bottom of your baking dish. Right. So this is interesting again. So with Nina's recipe, there was so much butter in the actual recipe that we didn't need to butter a dish because it's already in the dish. It's already in the actual recipe. But you're just rubbing this around to kind of grease and lubricate the inside of the baking dish. It's a fairly deep baking dish too. It's probably, oh, three inches deep. We won't fill it. But... We won't fill it up, okay. Think. My understanding is you're going to take a little bit of this mixture and just put it into the baking dish first. You're not going to pour the whole thing in. No, I'm not going to pour the whole thing. We're going to layer it. Oh, it's going to be layered. Okay, this is also a little different from what we did last time. Okay. You're just spreading this around the bottom of the baking dish. Spreading it around the bottom of the baking dish. This will help lubricate the noodle. Then we're going to put in a healthy handful of noodles. You're layering now noodles on top of a little bit of that uh, dairy mixture. We're going, originally this recipe did not have any apricots or jam in it, but we put apricots and poached a little bit poached apricots and apricot jam in it. These are poached apricots. Poached apricots. Did you poach them yourself? I did. Oh, because you're just sort of placing them around the top. It just adds a little more flavor to it. And sometimes I use poached sour cherries and cherry jam. Well, that's interesting. And why do you do that? Just to vary it. Sounds great. So now you're pulling out some apricot preserves. Okay, so you continue to just place dollops of the preserves around the top of the noodles, the first layer of noodles that you also put poached some apricots on. Right, then we're going to put another layer of the egg mixture. This is really a construction project. <laughs> Get the kid, little never kids to help you out? It, never thought of it as a construction project. This is something you love to do, right? This is part of your family history here. To make and it lets me know the holidays are coming up and it's just, it's an easy recipe. After that second layer of dairy and, and raisins and butter and sugar, now you're adding more of the cooked noodles. Um, and so how about you just keep doing layers until you run out of uh, ingredients? Your top layer should be the dairy or the noodle? It should be the dairy. The dairy. That's what the Frosted Flakes will stick to. And Frosted Flakes, that's an interesting addition too. Yeah. More sugar. And I've noticed that the Frosted Flakes we have today are not like the Frosted Flakes of yore. They're less sugar? Less sugar. 
I was surprised. Did you have to compensate um, and put more sugar than in the mixture I, itself? You let me know when you taste it. Okay, so now you're going back to the apricots and the apricot preserve. So this will just continue. You're gonna put a layer of, um, are they just frosted flakes out of the bag? Yes, I crush them a little bit. So you crush, all right. So let's, we'll continue to do this. We'll come back in a second when you add the frosted flakes. Take the frosted flakes. Crunch them a little in our hands and cover the top in frosted flakes, which takes probably around two cups for a nine by thirteen baking plate. And how did I mean? How do they come across the frosted flakes? Why not just because of the the, the sugar level? Well, I think originally it was corn flakes, and we just put sugar and cinnamon on it. Oh, okay. So if you wanted to, could you could do some cinnamon too, maybe? That would be nice with the raisin. We're going to put some cinnamon on top. Okay, so crush the frosted flakes. I can see why this won the Kugel off we did several years ago. How many Kugels were in that competition? Like eight or nine? Yeah, there were quite a few. And you won handily. Cinnamon and sugar on. Oh, cinnamon and sugar. Oh, gild the lily a little. My goodness. All right. She's sprinkling the cinnamon sugar over the top of the frosted flakes. No wonder why everybody loves this dish. Nina had a lot of dairy going on. You got a lot of sugar going on. Oh, and now you're adding dairy. melted butter. All right, that's the way on top, just to give it a little bit of sheen. Right, to crisp it up when it bakes. I cannot wait to try this. It's been several years since I've had this. That's why, I, frankly, that's why I'm doing this show, just so I could try your kugel again. It was an excuse for me to come back here and eat kugel. All right, so there goes the last of the butter. This is gonna go into what kind of an oven for how long? Preheated 350 degree oven. For? 40 to 50 minutes. Until it's brown on top, yeah? Brown. Well, we're gonna take a quick break here on the feed. Mimi's gonna put this into the oven for, as she said, 40 to 50 minutes. We'll let it come out, rest a bit, and then slice some. Um, and then Rick and I are gonna wrap things up. We'll have a little bit of tasting in the test kitchen. Then we'll preview some scenes from next week's show. So stay with us. You are listening to The Feed Podcast. To get your weekly fix, subscribe to us on iTunes or visit our website, thefeedpodcast.com. Commuters have known this for some time, but over in the West Loop at the Ogilvy Transportation Center, there are more than 30 specialty vendors just waiting to feed you inside the Chicago French Market. The market offers fresh ingredients for cooking at home, delicious grab-and-go options for any meal of the day, or even a simple picnic or office party. My name is Mary Aragoni. I'm the owner of Saigon Sisters. We make Vietnamese banh mi sandwiches, pho, spring rolls, rice bowls, and noodles. People love it. Have you seen the lines, by the way, over at the Aloha Poke over there? And there's like the Aloha Poke, there's a line, and then there's fumare meats, and then there's, well, as, as you just heard, the vendor. I mean, there's so much going on right now in that market. There's, there's quite a lot to eat. That's very exciting. I got to go over there and have some poke. Uh, they've got two entrances, 131 North Clinton and 118 North Canal. And how about this? Covered parking is free for an hour with a $20 purchase. Wow, that's great. They're open Monday to Saturday. You can also grab a bite and surf the internet since Wi-Fi is free. The Chicago French Market, a taste of Europe in the heart of the Midwest. Hey, Rick, I got a question. Like, how would you describe a fish taco? My favorite fish tacos are inspired by the fish tacos in Baja. Um, usually there, the fish is dipped in a like tempura-like batter and fried, and then they got all these delicious toppings that go on on them. It's crema. Right? There's cabbage. Crema, cabbage, hot sauce, avocado. Um, they can so. be avocado. Some people put them, some people don't. But I have to say it's this stuff that dreams are made out they of. They are. I've done that trip. Yes. And I, you know, the, the next best thing in the U.S. is in San mm-hmm. Diego. It's called Oscar's Mexican Seafood. They started out as a food truck in Tijuana, became a tiny shack in Pacific Beach just north of San Diego. Now they've got five locations in and around the city, including the latest in Encinitas. Everything's fresh, never frozen, and they make their salsas and agua frescas fresh on site each day. More information, visit OscarsMexicanSeafood.com. How crazy is it to think you can actually have your insurance company pay you to walk? What? Yes, they're going to pay you to walk. United Healthcare isn't crazy. They just want you to be healthy. Oh, one of their new programs is called United Healthcare Motion, where members can earn more than $1,000 a year toward their health reimbursement account or health savings account 
just for walking. I didn't even know I had a health savings account or a reimbursement account, but I that would be a good thing. Um, how do zero dollar copays sound? Uh, absolutely fabulous. That would be nice. That's yeah. a nice uh, uh, advancement in society or pharmacy experience that offers more flexibility and less disruption. Well, if your company works with United Healthcare, ask your friendly HR person about their programs. And if not, go tell them to switch today. I'm going to tell mine. Call 877-233-2059 or go to uhc.com slash benefits to get more information. United Healthcare, a proud supporter of the Illinois Restaurant Association and committed to your good health. Get the inside scoop by following us on Twitter at The Feed Podcast. Just trying to get that first piece out now. This is the tricky one, right? This is the tricky one. Do you use a spatula too or just the knife? No, we use a spatula too. We use everything we have on hand. And you took the- Extricate that first piece. So this came out of the oven, you let it sit for maybe 20 minutes or so. I mean, I'm a little impatient because I want to eat it, but typically 30 minutes would be good. Perfect. Let it, let it set up, yeah. So, oh, she's got a couple of tools now. You got a little offset spatula, you got a regular spatula. All the tools are coming out. Okay, that looks great. Got a little piece here. We're gonna try this. Do we have forks or are we just gonna go with our hands like you're doing? We have forks. We have forks? Okay, for real people here. <laughs> well, first of all, tasting the fruit preserve, that's a whole new ball game for me. And you could almost do Anything that's seasonal, like if you're using a peaches this time of year, um, that's a nice addition. It really adds, and I can taste the popped a little uh, raisin in there as well. So if you didn't like raisins, you still could do some of the preserves, I think, right? Totally. So here's the difference with this and Nina. So Nina, I think, had a cup of sugar in, her, in hers. You pulled back from that. You only had a half a cup of sugar when you were mixing it up, or a quarter cup. But then you added frosted flakes on the top, and you right. added some cinnamon and sugar. For and the, a little sweet. And the crushed pineapple. Yeah. Right, and so that's what I'm trying to get here at the bottom is the pineapple. I don't know that you can taste the pineapple. I you really can't. No. I mean, it's more pronounced with like the, the preserves that you put in or the right, fruit. The preserves and the fruit kind of do it. The cherry one is good, too, to use cherry jam with pieces in it and dried cherries that have been poached a little bit. But again, like Nina's, there's that crispiness on top from you know getting browned in the oven, and then there's sort of softness underneath. It's a nice contrast dish. You need to have that tris- crispy on top and soft noodles underneath. And I don't think you're going to eat a ton of this at the table, right? You're, re- you're going to have maybe one slice. That's all we do, pretty much. The kids sometimes eat two slices. This could, this could be a great brunch dish, too, though. It could be a good brunch dish. I've always thought that. So do Mimi's brunch and do Kugel. We'll do a brunch. We'll just serve Kugel for brunch. Well, this is delicious. And um, again, the recipe is going to be on our website because you're kind enough to share it with us, right? Perfect. That'll be great. Mimi Hotmeyer, thank you so much for doing this. I'm, I'm so appreciative. I'm so glad to have you in my life. I'm giving you a big hug right now. Um, thank you for doing this I for us. You. And uh, have, a, have a very wonderful um, and warm and uh, sweet new year. And you too. I wish the same to you and your family. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. And just so you can compare and contrast, I brought you some of Mimi's kugel as well. Now, she made this, um, and we, we froze it because we, we taped this a couple weeks ago. I thought it uh, today. I was like, we put it back in the oven to kind of bring it back to temperature. Well, um, it looks really different. Very different. Well, because yeah, she's more, a raisin. It's dense, denser. It's denser, and she is a raisin person. And this is a big mm, point that. of difference for kugel makers with or without raisins. She adds uh, the crushed pineapple. She puts in some mm. apricot preserves. You should have seen her, but I mean, you know her, so not surprising. Like when I showed up at her kitchen, she had the whole mise en place. She had like I'm silver sure. bowls of everything. <laughs> it was like Jacques Pepin. It was right. like you know, ready to go. No, um, she is just she made w- a wonderful human being, and she lives life to the fullest. She sure does. Um, and and I, I can see her, or I can taste her influence in this Google because 
when I, when it came out, it was like I was smelling all this fruitiness, mm -hmm. and I thought when you said raisins, oh, it's the raisins. No, it's the pineapple and the raisins and the apricot, apricot preserves. preserves. The top um, is the uh, crushed frosted flakes. Yeah, that's and what I was wondering sweetness. because it doesn't have that sort of the the firmer or the harder version of the the noodles on the top, right? Which can can get kind of hard in when the baking process. The difference here also, she layers noodle uh, dairy topping noodle dairy topping whereas nina just combines everything she mm -hmm. creams the butter and sugar together adds some eggs um sour cream cottage cheese and then kind of folds the noodles into that so they're totally incorporated right this is more of a layering situation oh so well is, this is i would say the gourmet version it is of it. yeah <laughs> but they're both very and both very different but both good yeah yeah i don't think they're very different but this one just oh, takes it all to the next level okay all right, I, I agree. Okay. All right. Well, I'm glad. Well, so you, so Kugel. So this is your first cool experience. So yeah, you. Yeah, you like I think this? I'm I'm taken. Good. I'm taken I'm with glad it. You, I, get, I think you may have to be. In, well, let me put it this way: if you were raised with it, you would have more appreciation than I have mm -hmm. for it. Um, but I'm really into anything that comes with tradition. Great. All right. I'm glad you got to see it today. All right, coming up next week, a new kind of beer company focused more than just about any brewery on how its beers pair with food. So the next one we have is our smoked applewood gold. You're going to get applewood smoke on the nose. You're also going to find it on the palate, yet it's still light and refreshing. And smoke is an aromatic in a flavor profile we usually reserve for barbecue or scotch. And the truth is, this is a style of beer that uh, the Germans, specifically out in Bamberg, have been making for quite a bit of time. A former cook at Per Se in New York comes to Chicago to create food-friendly beer, much of it lower in alcohol. We'll meet the guy behind Moody Tongue Brewery. That's next week on the show. You can always contact us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter at The Feed Podcast. You can also check out our ingredient challenges, get recipes and other information about previous shows by simply visiting our website, thefeedpodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe and rate the show on iTunes. And be sure to follow me at Rick underscore Bayless. And I'm at Steve Delinsky. You can definitely find us on the Apple Podcasts as well as SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. We've also got a brand new Facebook group at The Feed Podcast. So check it out. More information about both Nina and Mimi's Google recipes on our website as well. Linnea Dominic's our intern. Max Delinsky supervised today's music. Bureaucratic wrote and performed our theme song. And The Feed Podcast is edited by Matt Cunningham at Truthful Enthusiasm. Whether you're an individual or institution, get your story online at truthfulenthusiasm.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. 